guys. <coughs> mm. Okay, I got a request to ask um, basically a viewer asked me how do I a viewer asked me if I can give any tips when it comes to buying used cars. So a lot of people are actually afraid of buying used cars. But if you guys met uh, car guys, most of them would be like, hey, what are you talking about? It's fine. See, the thing is this. A lot of people have, have stigmas with used cars. Um, they will tell horror stories of whoever who that they know, you know, bought a used car and uh, then they end up in blah, 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 trouble and all that. Now, the thing is this, buying a used car and a new car is a totally different thing, right? Buying a new car is 99% um, of the time, you're going to have identical experience. Whether you buy it in this showroom versus the other showroom. Of course, uh, these are mass-produced stuff. It's manufacturing and cars are very complicated machineries. There are thousands of parts being put together from various different suppliers all over the world. And there will be times whereby your car end up with a part that is faulty is perfectly normal and acceptable and hence that's why there's a warranty all right but buying used car is a totally different case because uh, most people would think that oh used cars they're all crap shit you know i need a lot of money to fix them back that might not be the case say for example a lot of people are saying that uh, when they watch my videos my my upkeep of my cars and they go like oh probably if if I if if I can get my hands on on your used car that'll be great because you take care of your cars really well. Um, but the thing is this: that used car that you buy from that used car dealer lot might have been mine, or somebody else who's just like me. You know, it's just that when he wants to sell his cars. Uh, he doesn't want to either he doesn't want to go through the process of putting up his cars on a website receiving phone calls uh, no end and then having appointments people coming and look at the car drive it a bit touch it a bit and then uh, go back and then get their loan and then their loans got rejected blah 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 all that some people just don't want to go through that and then they just let the used car dealer have it Case in point, I am the kind of person, right? Uh, I understand for a fact that, yes, if you sell your car in the open market, everybody is selling around this price. Let's say it's 150000 to 160000 and then you expect that. But when you bring your car to a dealer lot, the dealer would offer you probably 120000 At best, if you're lucky, it's 125000 you know, uh, the thing is this, you have to understand, they're buying your car straight up. And they have to live with the risk, right? Your car might break down. You, do you think that the used car dealers don't fix cars back? Of course they do. Um, your car might not be able to just sell in time and then they have to weather the losses as the car depreciate year by year. So, it's perfectly okay to accept the fact that um, they need a margin to cushion their blow. So, for me, I'm the kind of person, yeah, market price is 150 but if I want to sell my car and the dealer offer me 120 I'm fine. Okay? But of course, if you have a loan with your car and that your loan is still higher, than the price that was being offered by the dealer is very simple just don't sell it right why why sell your car to the dealer at 120 when you owe the bank 150 that means you need to fork out another 30,000 cash 
and tie it to your car and basically dump it into the, the ocean. No, just continue to drive your car. What's the problem? Right? Just drive it and until your loan amount is lower than the market value of the car, that day will come. Be it if you take a seven year loan or nine year, that day will come. So just just don't buy the wrong car. Now this is where it is. If you bought the wrong car, uh, chances of you selling it earlier than the supposed mature period will be higher. And there will come the chance whereby you consider yourself low-balled by the dealer or you blame the car brand. You say that, oh, my Mercedes-Benz or my Volkswagen or my BMW has crap used car value, blah, 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 blah. The truth is this, there is no established used car value. There is no such thing, all right? Banks appoint an agency who give them a report on uh, uh, values of cars, but these so-called agencies, they are not gods, you know? They too hire a bunch of people to go out there, scour around Muda, Carlis, you know, and then calculate their median value and all that. At the end of the day, the market dictates the price. So let's say, for example, there are five cars. Your car is super rare. There's only five of them. And then you're trying to sell yours. You look at the market. People, some people are offering 120 another person 140 130 And then you're like, okay, that's the market value. I'm going to price my car about that, that price range. But if you call all of them, all five of you, and you all just say, okay, let's do this. All of us sell our cars at 180 Do you think it will work? For the short term, if there is someone who urgently wants to let go of the car, of course it won't work. But if all of you just stay there, leave it there, yeah, it's 180 One day, one person might sell his car at 180 and there you go, voila. That's your new used car value for your car. It's as simple as that. Okay? So, coming back to my question, um, or my topic for the day. Um, how, you know? Now, the thing is this. A lot of people also ask me to recommend them a, a, a reliable dealer, used car dealer. Now, the thing is this. There's no such thing as good cars only end up with reliable dealers. Sometimes a reliable dealer who have a good track record might have a car that might break down in a month later. He wouldn't know. right? It's not him trying to cheat you. It's a very organic business. Sometimes a great car might end up with a not-so-reputable dealer because everybody wants a deal. And they open their doors for business. If this car came to them and is in good condition, of course he's going to buy it. He's not going to say that, oh, I'm a bad dealer, I'm not going to buy a good car. There's no such thing. Okay. So at the end of the day, it's up to you yourself to do your due diligence and make sure your car is alright. Now, just a few years ago, this process may be rather scary for, for most people because... Uh, Okay, I wouldn't say a few years ago, probably 10 years ago, this industry standard of sending your car for an inspection isn't something that is widely uh, accepted by dealers. Back then, if you tell a dealer, oh, uh, I put a 500 ringgit booking or 1,000 ringgit booking, I need to bring your car to my mechanic and uh, if he's okay, then then we'll proceed with the loan and all that. If, if you say the car is not okay, then I won't. The dealer will just ask you to fly kite, all right? Uh, they can tell you, you can ask your mechanic to come here. I mean, he can look at the car, but if you're not buying, don't touch my car. I'm not going to risk sending my car here and there, jack it up and all that, and let people touch it, and, you know? No, but now, because of market uh, sentiment and all that, and it has become sort of like an industry standard, now, some of you still don't know that. You guys will still be like, huh, am I allowed to do that? Now, if a dealer really do not allow you to inspect the car, walk off. There are so many dealers out there, so many cars out there. And uh, back then, you have to 
ask a friend or a mechanic and then he will come and pop the hood look here and there but um, if you're lucky I mean now I think you're luckier you have and then oh, sorry I skip that and then then you go into the process okay negotiating the price blah 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 and uh, you're still not very sure with that car because you just can't do an inspection <coughs> sorry and then uh, after you bought the car, uh, it's a scary thing, right? Because you do not know any history about the car. But now you have uh, entities like us, uh, like uh, GMR, our partner, who, who's working with us, we work with them, uh, that there is a network of workshops, there's a network of inspection centers. You know, you can see, you can pick the one that is nearest to the dealer that you're looking at the car, and then... Uh, if you're really, really interested with a car, you don't want the dealer to deal with another person, you give them a booking or a deposit, and then that means you are really, really keen with the car, you prepare your documents, and then you pass them all your documents, your, your, your bank account statements, at least three months, six months to be safe. Now banks always they ask for six months anyway. Your uh, pay slips, your, your income tax, your EPF, and all that, all these statements, Basically, papers that can prove you can pay the loan. All right. So prepare all this and then uh, and then pass it to the dealer. While then you give them a deposit and then you arrange the car to the inspection center. And then uh, of course there will be fee. I mean, it'll be a sixty ringgit or eighty ringgit or hundred ringgit. I mean, that's small money to pay, right? To to inspect a car to make sure the condition is good. That's a very small money to pay. And then of course they'll check the car. They'll check. First thing they'll check is for any leakages, right? Leakages is a sign of further problems. And it is something that is not... Uh, it can be an easy fix. It might be a prolonged issue, which means uh, the car might have uh, run on low fluids and all that. Uh, they'll check on that first, and then they'll check the suspension, the bushings, whether everything is all right. And then they try their best to see if this car has been in an accident before. Now, why I say this? Because if someone is really, really good at fixing cars, it's very, very hard to tell if their car has been in a minor accident or not. When I say minor, I can, it can include a total replacement of the hood, the uh, wheel, uh, the front, what do you call that, the mudguard or the, whatever, the arch and all that can be a replacement of a door those are these are like minor accidents uh, major accidents will be those whereby the frame has been bent but they are not to uh, scrap status yet right uh, scrap is really beyond repair right or dangerous to be driven on the road again where let's say the uh, the frame or the chassis has, has broken in two and all that but bent there are tools out there that can pull it back in place and make sure everything is, is properly fixed. There are techniques to do that. Uh, our cars are made up of different different parts. Some parts can just be taken off, subframes and all that, and then you can replace them. So cars can be fixed. A good car, a good, a good mechanic can fix a car back to 90% uh, of its condition, you know. Um, yeah. So, so they'll try their best, uh, of course, um, of course they're better than I am, but at least for me, the first thing that I'll look at, I mean, if I want to see whether there are any accidents, of course I look at the body, are they misaligned, bumpers and all that, um, and then uh, the, the engine bay, you look at the, uh, you'll pop the hood, look at the sides, whether there has been marks of uh, ripples, knockback and all that, and look at uh, paint, paint is another way uh, on the on the engine bay, right? If you see traces of two different color of paint, you know, this car has been painted before. Why, right? Why did it go for repaint if it weren't for an accident, right? But don't have that stigma on an accident car. Actually, cars that have minor accidents, they're perfectly fine. The most important thing is for you to drive them, right? Whether the car feels right or not whether there are any weird noise coming out of the car or not. But if it is an old car, suspension having noise, 
side. Those basically, I, I I told Bing this. If you hear cars sounds that are crop 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 crop, that means your car can still run, right? It is just the bushings or whatever. These things won't fail your car. But if you hear sounds like whoa, I mean, that can be the wheel hub. I mean, if you are lucky. But if it is a transmission and all that, oh, huh, right, the, the, the flywheels and all that, and those can be ca catastrophic failures uh, because when they break or let loose, you know, mm -hmm, you don't want that. Or uh, excessive tickling or ticking sound with, when the engine is started, you know, you don't want all that, all right? Um, but if you're an EVO Club member, I mean, which is free to join anyway, you can get it arranged for an inspection, right? That'll be nice. Now, uh, coming back to that, push that aside in terms of whether the car is good or bad, you know. For me, personally, um, I always buy weird cars, so I don't have a lot of option to look around. So, uh, my taste is rather eccentric. Let's put it this way. Um, uh, after my first car, my Audi A4, I bought a Subaru Legacy BP5 wagon, alright? And uh, there aren't many out there at that time, probably about five or six of them. And uh, I have little choice. I mean, I look around, there are... Of course, you do your study. You want the specs that, that you want, right? Some doesn't come with the panoramic roof. Some has it. Uh, some doesn't have the Macintosh sound system. Some has it. So I want the spec that I wanted, all right? So I will go around and look for the spec that I want. Uh, that can be a car that is really good in condition, but it's not the spec I want, versus another one that is not so good in condition, but it's the spec I want, I will go for that, because I know I can fix it back, all right? Uh, that's, that's just me, all right? And um, that's one thing. Um, same goes with the Mini Cooper S Clubman that we bought. Mine is the highest spec, the one with the Harman Kardon sound system, the one with the panoramic roof, with the iDrive in the middle of the screen. That is very, very difficult to get uh, for, for Clubman Cooper S because the local one doesn't have that back then. Okay, And with the, uh, they call it the chili pepper spec or something like that, uh, with that, that red accents, and then uh, you have the leather seats. Um, so that was a, a full spec car. And uh, the one that I bought, the condition was rather unappealing because the dealer got the car in and they haven't touched up the car. The car was really dirty. It was at their backyard. They haven't even touched it up. They haven't basically do the, uh, the I don't know what you call that, the, uh, you know, the clean up, the po polishing and all that. They haven't even done all that. The car was lock, stock, barrel from UK. Recon came in like that. And it looks like crap. Uh, but for me, I'm fine. Because I know the, the thing that I want to, to make sure is that when I look at the interior, I don't want any crap parts. For us car guys, uh, when you buy a car, when, when we buy a car, the interior is actually more important than the engine bay. Why? Engine bay are just mechanical parts. You can just buy and fix them. Interior is... It's rather hard. It's harder. If you bought a car with a cream interior, you think you can find a cream part of that dashboard? It's not easy. It's so difficult. And if you order a brand new set from UK, you think the color would match? A six-year-old car versus a you know a brand new part, it wouldn't match. So a well taken care of interior for me is way more important than almost every every other thing you know interior comes first then the engine bay then the exterior right exterior is the easiest to fix you have a misaligned bumper you have a scratch you have a hole you have a crack bumper blah 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 the body work has, has dents here and there blah that's a one week job get it done right any shop can do it <coughs> um engine bay engine bay is very straightforward just order the parts and uh, for I myself I don't buy used parts okay there are certain things that I will buy used in terms of parts rims uh, 
what other stuff that I would buy used. I don't mind buying used if I couldn't find new ones or the price differences are really, really big. Um, um, let's say if I need to replace a door, you know, or a fender or a grill, a bumper, all these things, headlamps and all that, I don't mind. I can buy used. What are the things that I won't buy used? clutch, water pumped, uh, whatever important parts in the car, all these things I will always buy new, I will always buy original, or if not, OEM. I don't buy OEM compatible, I buy OEM. What does compatible mean? Compatible, it's, a, it's, a, it's just a better name, you know. OEM means, let's say I'm Bosch, I manufacture the part for BMW, right? I have a set list for BMW, but the parts num part number is identical to one of my range. You know, that means what I sell outside, which is not BMW branded, but it is actually the part for BMW. This is what we call OEM. All right? There is no such thing as OEM compatible. OEM compatible is not OEM. OEM compatible basically is, uh, I manufacture the product, which is, I design it myself, but the mounting points and all that is identical to the one that can fit onto your car. You know, um, that those are risky. There are reputable OEM uh, compatible makers out there. There are famous brands who from Germany, mostly from 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 those countries, but. That's where the loophole where counterfeit products come in, you know. The counterfeit products, they never uh, officially requested the parameters, the drawings and all that from the official car maker or send their products to be approved and all that. They, they never went through that. They just bring the part back, do a mold and copy the product and then they produce that. Those don't. Just, just, just don't, alright? Uh, counterfeit products are... Yeah, I mean, it depends on what, okay? But critical parts, uh, coy packs, spark plugs, uh, all the pumps, all the flywheels, the belts, all this are by original, all right? Or OEM, okay? So, um, yeah, that's, that's, that's my thinking on buying used cars. Um, coming back to what I mentioned just now, I buy weird cars. Now, when you are someone who is like me, who likes to buy rarer, weirder cars, there's not a lot of cars to choose from. So, you make do with what you have. Now, humans are like this. When given a lot of choice, then we'll be very, uh, you know, picky about it. But when you have very little choice, we're fine with it. Right? When you go into a parking lot, when it's empty, that's the hardest to park. When it's full, you spot one parking, you're like, ah, yes, you know. So, uh, buying a used car, uh, of course, you have to take your time. You go. You you must have a budget in mind. Now, I have a trick when it comes to budget. Now, you'll be looking at the same model. Let's say a BMW 320i, right? You want to buy. You you have a budget in mind. Let's say your budget is hundred thirty thousand. Let's say, and then you look at your budget. You look through Carlis. You look through Muda, and you're like, okay, I want a 320i. But my budget is only one hundred thirty thousand. I can only look at the two thousand fourteen one because those are in the realms of hundred. This is an example. I do not know what's their price. I don't think it's that high. Three twenty i two thousand fourteen cannot be hundred thirty k. Let's say it's hundred and ten k lah. Huh? My budget is hundred and ten k. Let's say uh, hundred and ten k. That's my maximum budget. Two thousand fourteen is hundred and ten k. Fifteen is hundred twenty. Sixteen is hundred thirty. Hmm, I can't afford the 2016 one. I'll go for the 2014 one. Now, I'm someone who won't do that if, I'm, if I were you. If I'm buying those kind of cars where there's a lot out there in the market, my trick is this. I will look at the cheapest one, let's say 2014, 110k, and that's my budget, right? I will bring that budget and go to a newer one, a 2016 one, 130k, and then go with that fella. That's what I will do. Because... That car might not be able to sell now, and if he wait another year, he might end up here as well. 
And if you look for a private seller, is uh, most of the time you'll be able to nego better than a dealer. Dealer, their margins aren't huge. I'm talking honest dealers here. There are dishonest dealers. Okay, I'm on talking honest dealers here. They, they, their margins aren't huge, uh, and most of them now they 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 are very little um, to move about. Of course, it depends on the price of your car. Okay, so. Um, if you're buying a 120k car, 130k car, they're, they're, they're earning ugh, a couple of grand, you know, two, three, they let go of the car. Again, honest dealers, okay? Um, so, if you go to the, the owner, the owner is trying to sell 150,000. When he brings his car to the dealer, the dealer will offer him 120. So, you have 120 to 150 to play with from there, right? You can offer him 130, you know, and he'll be like, ah, okay, fuck this shit. And sometimes there is a trick that used car dealers would use. They will ask you, oh, your car still got loan or not? You know, they want to make it sound like oh, it's troublesome to blah, 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 blah. No, if you tell them this car, oh, I fully paid already, then, then, then they know they can, they can press your price because you fully paid the car. It makes no difference for you if you're selling it at 120 or 100. It's the same because you won't get pressured of having to to lose money when you sell a car in, in, in a way because you're still thinking about 100k so uh, that's one way to gauge whether the owner will be able to sell the car lower to you now um, so that's for cars there are plenty out there just how I mentioned about there are dishonest dealers now there are dealers out there who actively actively go and buy cars that are crushed now I it's legal is legal. So should I say these are bad dealers? No. It's a fair practice. Um, insurance, when they, when you have, when you met an, an accident and then you, your car is already crashed and then the insurance, and then your dealer open a sky high price for your insurance company. You think the insurance company will pay for that? No. They rather declare a total loss, they pay you the amount and then uh, they, they take the car back. It's their car now. And of course, they have to sell it through an auction. And then uh, somebody would go there to Lelong and buy up the car for a really low price. Okay, So there are actually dealers out there who actively go out there to just buy these cars at a very low price. Let's say a car where the market value is about 60000 they might bought They might buy the car back for fifteen, eighteen, And then they spend another ten, fifteen to fix it. They have a profit margin of 20, 30,000 selling a used car that is at 60, 70,000. There are a lot of these out there. Um, well, if they do a good job and you cannot spot it and the car drives well, who's to blame, right? Um, are you, do, is there a website or a system to detect these cars? No. No. But. One good thing that we have is that cars that are really, really, really damaged, you know, that the insurance company declare it as a scrap. Insurance company would pass the VIN number of the car, the chassis number of the car to JPJ and tell them to cancel this. So that's where Pusmacom comes in because these cars, if someone bought it and fixed it back, they wouldn't be able to get it registered because the insurance has declared it as a scrap. So at least we have some form of uh, safety net there. Right? We don't get the absolute shit crap ones that are dangerous, but other than that, there's no safety net. Okay? So, uh, coming, have I covered some of okay, I'm sorry, I didn't prepare anything. I just saw a comment and then I just decided to roll the video. So, um, my own experience when it comes to buying used cars, um, um, hmm. I don't, again, I mentioned, I don't really mind if, as, if it has been in a minor accident, uh, as long as the interior looks perfect, that's very important. And then, uh, when it comes to the price, um, it's a bit of a luck thing. I think I'm quite lucky when I when I was buying used cars. I mean, I'm, I'm with the knowledge of knowing what's out there, what are the values, what you can get, 
helps me in a way in determining whether that's a fair price to pay for that car or not, right? Um, um, so for me, I'll give you an example. My recent two purchase, the RS6 and the uh, Repeat test, both are used cars. I didn't even test drive the cars. I didn't even send it to an inspection. Why? Let me tell you why. Now, all the RS6 out there are recons, right? Most of them. They are sell they're selling for about 570, 580,000. Hey, I can't afford it. Right? My budget is about 300 ish. Right? So there are some used ones that are being sold for 400 or 390 and all that. So when I spotted mine, uh, when, 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 when the dealer told me, hey, there's one guy who was thinking of letting go, uh, an owner, so I was like, oh, what, what's the price he's, he's, he's offering? You know, he's offering 300. 300? I didn't even want to nego. I didn't even want to nego or whatever. Send me pictures. I look at the pictures. I look at the car. I want to know the specs. That's important. I want to know the spec. And I, I sort of know that people who buy cars that are 4 liter V8 and all that, they're not exactly, they, they won't fix their cars under the tree, let's put it that way, right? They, they too love their cars and all that. So when I look at the pictures, I'm like, okay, fine, I'll buy it. Why? Why buy it before I check everything, you know? It's a bit of a bet, but it's, an, it's, a, it's a calculated bet. Because, put it this way, I can't buy another one at this price, right? That's the first thing. Second thing, there won't be another one at this price. Right? Third thing, I'm not the kind of person whereby I'll go home, sit down and think and wait and all that. I compute really fast when there is an answer out there and I can compute immediately and then basically rule out all the other options and then immediately go for it. That's how I, I think. I'm not the kind of person whereby I'm not, I'm not the kind of person who's not used to making quick decisions, you know. I won't go like, oh, let me think about it. What's there to think about, right? There aren't, there's not, not another one up there and, and, and you're a freaking poor shit. You, you should have just bought a 3 Series but you wanted an RS6, right? You, you wanted something that you can't afford. Now there's one that is at this price. Just buy it, yeah. So that's how I compute not a very logical manner, not a very safe manner, but it's a calculated approach. For me, what's the worst thing that can go wrong, in my impression, right? An oil leak, let's just do an overhaul. Five, six thousand ringgit, seven, eight thousand ringgit, can I afford? Yeah. Uh, um, what could go wrong, you know? Change a belt, change a clutch, blah, blah, blah. So for me, I'm like, okay, if the price is right, I'll get it. That's the first thing. Second thing is the uh, the repeat S. There are no other repeat S used cars out there, right? They are all repeats, and I wanted the repeat S. And uh, this this is a rather recent one. It's a two thousand fifteen car, and it's beautiful in white color. That's the color I wanted. I do not want the real screen entertainment because uh, Aston Martin is pretty low tech. So if they have a screen in some of their 2014-15 cars, you can expect it's a crap shit uh, uh, interface with really low rest screens and all that. So I don't want that. I want nice bucket sports seats. That's it, right? And, uh, <coughs> and I don't want some funky uh, interior with, with... Somehow, for Aston's, I just don't like to see them in... Uh, cream leather with a wood veneer that's a Bentley thing to me that's not an Aston thing imagine a Ferrari with or a Lamborghini with a cream interior and wood patterns <laughs> right so uh, it is exactly the spec I wanted it is uh, the repeat S it is white in colour which is very rare for repeats most of them are that dark bronze silver kind of color and it's white it's beautiful and uh, this white is called some 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 moon crystal shit whatever soya bean um, 
uh, I like the colour and the interior is black with white stitches. It's exactly the spec that I wanted and it has the Bang & Olufsen sound system. My, R my RSX as well has the Bang & Olufsen. That's, that's a very important thing for me. Bowls don't cut it. Actually, after having the Volvo, the Bowers & Wilkins, uh, even the Bang & Olufsen, bleh, they just can't compare. So far, I haven't sat in a car where the sound system can compare to the XC90 Bowers & Wilkins. Not Lexus Mark Levinson, not Bentley Name, not Rolls Royce Bespoke, Aston Martin Bang & Olufsen, none. No cars that I have set in, stock sound system, is better than the Bowers & Wilkins of Volvo XC90s. I'm, I kid you not. Okay, none of them out there are better. Um, so, uh, okay, I haven't set in the new 7 Series Bowers & Wilkins yet. And uh, come to mind, one is comparable, is the S-Class Coupe's Burmester. Even that loses up a bit. Nah, none. None. Okay? Uh, <laughs> So yeah, even the RS6 Bang & Olufsen is in... But the, the, the tweeter thing is something I really, really wanted. You know? If this car comes with the bow sound system and um, has all the weird specs like night vision, but without here and there, then, then I might reconsider. But, but the RS6 is the perfect spec that I wanted. It has his up display. It has uh, the keyless entry, vacuum doors. I love vacuum doors, by the way. Um, it has that high spec headlamp, the one with the the, the, the the LED, not the projector headlamp one. That is freaking ugly. And uh, yeah, it has all the specs that I wanted. Even had a quattro wood down there. So I love it. I love it. I love the spec. It has the carbon ceramic brakes. That is like to me, it's not the braking power. It's the looks of it. It's the way it looks. You know, it looks just wow, man, fantastic. Anyway. Um, yeah, the RS6 has all the specs that I wanted, especially the sound system. So when I look at the specs, the specs is, is right. The price, I, I can't nego the price for the Aston because it's, it's the one and only repeat S out there. It's just a matter of whether I can or cannot afford it, right? So it's very difficult for me to afford it. I have to sell my Volvo, sell, 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 sell. sell. I, want, I have to sell my BMW as well. Uh, to afford the, the, the Aston Martin and um, three br three banks rejected me and finally the last bank uh, approved it so sorry bank <laughs> if you're watching my video I'm a high risk customer <laughs> okay I never default my payment not even one month not even one week okay, I pay them on time the only thing that I have I have ever been late in paying are my credit card bills because I lost my bills. I lost my email, I lost my bill, I just carry on with my life until I got a phone call. Uh, sorry, I got paid. So all this ended when I passed all this to my wife. So now, okay, anyway, sidetrack. <laughs> so, yeah, so um, my recent two purchase is not the best scenario or case to, to, to buy a used car, but I'm telling you the, the macro view. Sometimes you can afford to pick and choose if you're buying a car that has a lot of options out there. Let's say you're buying an A45. Oh, if you're, if you're thinking of buying an A45, uh, check out his channel, Carl Evo AMG. All right, subscribe to him. He's an expert in A45s. He did a video about how to choose A45s. Very good video, all right? Um, if you're buying an M4, there are shit tons out there. If you're buying Macans, I, I tell you, actually, I did consider the Macan a little bit because primarily it's, it's for my wife. The RS6 is for my wife. I did consider the Macan because, I mean, which woman wouldn't love a Macan, right? But I just couldn't because when I search Porsche Macan, there's 800 of them out there. Yeah, in Kali's and Muda and all that, there's 800 of them. Uh, so, 800 Makan, okay, 300,000 ringgit. 
less than five Audi RS6, three hundred thousand. Which one do you think will come down faster? The price, right? Demand and supply. Okay, so it's not just the price whether they come down. I mean, for me, for me, the perfect Macan is the two liter Macan. All right, because if you're buying anything else, it's just pointless because. It's a lovely small SUV that's 2 liter turbo, fast enough, small enough, just nice. The engine for that car is just nice. A 3 liter is a bit of an overkill. Uh, if you bought a Macan Turbo, you, you bought the wrong car. The Macan Turbo with a 3.6 stupid engine is just... It's an old dinosaur. It's like a dinosaur with two jetpacks, you know. It's a fucking fat Brachiosaurus with two jetpacks at the back. It's not going to fly anywhere. The Macan Turbo for the spec, the 3.6 litre twin turbo, blah, blah, is a slow car for that spec. I'm sorry if you bought a Macan Turbo. I mean, I still see, when I saw a Macan Turbo, I'll be like, oh, salute. You are a brave man. But it's a wrong choice. <laughs> you bought the wrong car. <laughs> anyway, sorry, sorry, sorry. The Macan S is is good. Macan and Macan S, fantastic choice. Okay, Macan Turbo. Uh, I know you're rich, but uh, wrong. <laughs> anyway, um, sorry, I sidetrack again. So yeah, yeah, yeah. That's. I don't know whether I answered your questions or not, but. Uh, Buying a used car is never about the dealer, it's never about what is your own due diligence, okay? And uh, I don't think I want to go through all the check the headlamps, check the seat mechanism. These are stupid guides. People who write those guides, they can write washing machines, you know, check whether the washing machine works, check whether the fridge works, check your mother, la, fuck, la, right? Waste of time, you write this kind of stupid stuff for what, right? Of course, people will check it. Of course, you have to fiddle with everything, right, in the car. But I tell you, um, uh, in a used car, especially like a, if you're looking for like a weirder used car, or whatever, let's say a window switch doesn't work versus if, if this car, if there's plenty of this car out there, okay, let's say a window switch doesn't work versus uh, one that the rear armrest lid has a crack there. Right. Don't get the one with the working window switch. Window switches are very easy to buy, very easy to source. You know, that's what I mean by interior stuff. Okay. Your your lids, your armrests, the hinges, the plastics. Uh, these things are way harder to find. Uh, and uh, more troublesome to take care uh, to, 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 to basically um, yeah alright so uh, this is a stupid used car buying guide and, uh, and I've made about thousand videos so if you like my content